Well, it's good to be with you at Potton, and even though we can't uh, be physically together, it's still uh, good to be with you this evening. If you've got your Bibles, please turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, there's some well-known verses in there, and we'll consider those verses uh, together this evening. Uh, but we'll read the first 12 verses together, uh, and then we'll look more closely uh, at verses three, uh, so verses 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3 then, and we'll start to read at verse 1. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favour and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honour the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Shall we pray and ask for God's help uh, as we consider these verses? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for your word and we thank you for how it uh, speaks to us today. And Father, we pray uh, as we look at uh, just a couple of verses in Proverbs, we pray that you'd speak to us, change us, show us the Lord Jesus, make us more like him, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, perhaps you're very familiar with verses 5 and 6 of uh, Proverbs chapter 3, and um, we're just going to look for a few minutes at, at those two verses. But in verse 5, uh, the first part of verse 5, we see a principle for life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. I wonder, does that shape your life? If there was anything uh, that you're going to live your life by, let it be by those words. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. There's so many things that guide us. Uh, there's so many things that influence us. There's so many things that affect what decisions we make. But let this uh, be the pattern of your life, to trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's a principle uh, for life. Flick back to verse 1 uh, and look at the first two words of verse 1. My son, my son. This is King Solomon, uh, famous for his wisdom. Uh, you remember how he prayed and uh, God appeared to him and said, ask whatever you want and I'll give it to you. And Solomon prayed and asked for wisdom to rule. And so this is wise King Solomon there, his Proverbs. And here as an older man, he's passing on his wisdom uh, to his son. And he says, my son, and listen uh, to these words. Now, if you're a younger person uh, watching this, I don't know whether you'd categorise yourself as uh, in the younger group or not. But if you're a younger person uh, watching this, hear these words. These words are for you. Here is a wise old king advising, offering guidance uh, for his son. If you're young, listen to these words. You won't find uh, a better piece of advice in your whole life than to trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's a principle for you to shape uh, your life by. And even if you didn't include yourself uh, in the younger uh, bracket, this is what a heavenly father would say to his children. Now, if you're God's child, this is what God would say to you. He'd say, my son, trust me, trust in the Lord with all your heart. With all your heart. Notice in verse 6 it says, In all your ways acknowledge him. With your whole being, 
with everything you've got. Uh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. With everything, trust God. Trust him. What is it to trust? What is it to trust someone or something? I'm sure you could find many uh, definitions. But to trust is to be so confident of something or to be so confident in someone that you don't think about uh, the consequences of it not being true. They don't cross your mind. You're so trusting that that thing that could potentially go wrong doesn't cross your mind. <coughs> Let me give you an example. If you're walking uh, along the pavement in uh, Potton or wherever you are, you're so confident that the pavement won't collapse and you won't fall through the pavement. You don't even think about it. It doesn't cross your mind when you're walking that you could possibly fall through. You're so trusting uh, in that pavement. You don't worry. You don't think about it. It doesn't cross your mind uh, that you might fall through. But if you're walking along a cliff edge and you're not quite sure of the ground underneath you, you're thinking very much about where you put your steps. You're treading very carefully, testing the ground before you put your full weight on it, because you're not quite sure, perhaps. You don't trust what's underneath you so much. You're thinking uh, about the consequences. Or another example, when you put your money uh, into the bank, you trust that bank. You trust that bank not to give your money away uh, to people that you haven't told them to. Uh, you don't check that uh, all the transactions that are going out your account because you assume that just the ones that you've authorised uh, are going out to your account. And so you don't worry about whether money's going out of your account to fraudulent people. Well, until you get a text to check and the banks say, can you just check these transactions? Uh, and then you start to worry about it. But you get the point. When you're trusting someone or you're trusting something, you're not worrying, you're not thinking about, they're not crossing your mind the consequences of that trust being misplaced. So what is it to trust the Lord? You're so confident in God. You're so sure of God. Uh, sh sure, certain uh, of his character certain and sure of the work that he's done in your life, you forget all the consequences of what could go wrong in life. You forget what could go wrong because you trust God and his goodness. You trust that he's good. You trust that he's got your best. You trust that your future is secure. You don't think about the consequences of it not being right. You know, the Lord is trustworthy. So many things in this world uh, we put our trust in and they let us down. Uh, perhaps you can think of people or things that you've put your trust in and they've gone. They've let us down. Uh, they haven't been trustworthy, but God is trustworthy. This world changes. Uh, we've seen that, haven't we? It's changed so quickly over the last six months, nine months uh, with this pandemic that's swept across the world. Everything's changed. The world changes. People change. But what does God say about himself? I am the Lord and I do not change. You can trust God. He doesn't change. This world, sadly, uh, is full of broken promises. It's full of people who lie to you. Perhaps you've had your pension age changed in the last few years. And what you thought was sure, uh, the age at which you were getting some money from the government, future governments have changed and it's shifted. Or perhaps you've had people that you thought you trusted, they've lied to you uh, and they let you down. And sadly, uh, that is often uh, what happens in this world. But again, the Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. You can trust him. He doesn't change. He cannot lie. And God is in control. You can trust him. Later on in Proverbs, it says, uh, the lot is cast into the lap. Something that appears to be random, or if you like, the dice are rolled. It appears to be random. But the decision is of the Lord. Even things that appear random, God 
is in control of this world. You can trust him. You know, the virus isn't under control. And as much as the government and scientists would like to think they can get it under control, ultimately it's God uh, that's in control. You can trust him. And God is good. Remember that. God is good. You can trust him. You know, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. If you're his, if you're a child of God, if you belong to Christ through his death on the cross and his resurrection and you've trusted in him, all things that God does work for your good. Sometimes it doesn't seem it, does it? Things appear to go wrong and you think, why did God let that happen? But remember, all things work together for good. God is good and he will be seen to be good and so you can trust him. So trust the Lord. You can trust the Lord uh, because he is good, because he's in control, because he doesn't change. He cannot lie. He is trustworthy. So principle for life. <clears throat> well, how not to trust God? Uh, second half of verse five. This is how not to trust in the Lord. Uh, and lean not on your own understanding. You know, there are two types of wisdom or understanding in the world. There's human wisdom and there's God's wisdom, the Bible's wisdom, Jesus Christ's wisdom. Human wisdom or God's wisdom. Human wisdom, it comes from within and sometimes it can seem so logical. But remember that human wisdom is fallen. When Adam and Eve fell, like everything else, wisdom fell. So human wisdom is broken. It's not what it should be. But God's wisdom isn't fallen. It isn't broken. It cannot fail. Don't lean on your own understanding. Have you ever got uh, in from work a long day or a day at school or wherever you are, or you've been out for a long walk and you're exhausted and you're desperate to get home and just collapse uh, onto a chair? I'm sure you know that feeling. Well, would you collapse uh, onto this chair here? Of course you wouldn't. The chair looks old, it looks broken. And if you collapsed and put all your weight onto that chair, it would come away from underneath you. Compare it to this one. Would you collapse onto this chair uh, at the end of a day of work? Of course you would. It looks comfortable, it looks secure, it looks stable. When you follow the wisdom uh, that comes from within and don't follow God's wisdom, when you rest on your own wisdom, it's like collapsing and putting all your weight onto the rickety uh, broken chair. It will come crashing out from underneath you. Don't look to yourself for wisdom. Look to God. Don't support yourself with wisdom. Human wisdom is fallen. You know, only one man uh, to walk the earth has ever had good wisdom, perfect wisdom, perfect understanding. Think even about Solomon, the wise king who wrote these proverbs. So wise, uh, the queen of Sheba came and praised him for his wisdom. But look at Solomon at the end of his life. And where did his wisdom lead him? He disobeyed God. Uh, he had multiple wives and gathered horses, things that God had said not to do. And even Solomon fell, the wise king. But remember what it says about the Lord Jesus, that a greater than Solomon is here. The Lord Jesus, the Son of God, who has perfect wisdom. His wisdom isn't broken. His wisdom isn't fallen. <coughs> He's the perfect Son of God with perfect wisdom. Do you remember when he was just 12 years old and he was in the temple and he was teaching and speaking to all the people in the temple and what does it say? They were astonished at his understanding. Jesus Christ, the only one to have perfect wisdom. 
I don't know what problems uh, you're facing in your life at the moment. You know what problems you have. I don't know what decisions, uh, perhaps huge decisions, big decisions you have to make uh, in the next few days, weeks, months, and you don't know what to do. Sometimes there's areas of life that you just wish could be better. I don't know what those areas are, and you wish you could fix some part of your life to make life better. You know what areas uh, of your life are like that. You know, when we have problems and decisions and things we want to change in our life, we so often want a quick answer. We so often think, well, what can I do to change it? What can I do to solve this problem? What can I do to make this decision? We want a quick answer and so we look within and think, how can I sort out the situation? And we look within. And sometimes our wisdom, it seems so logical and so obvious what to do. But it's so easy to look within and forget uh, to consult God and to consult the Bible. You know, true wisdom isn't found within yourself. It's found in the Bible, in God's word. It's found outside of yourself. God alone uh, is wise. How does it work itself out? Or well, perhaps you can identify uh, with this. You have a problem um, in your life and you know that if you take a, a course of action, you know it will solve that problem and it will. But you know that action is sinful. You know, sometimes it's easier to lie uh, and to, in many ways, it would solve a problem. But you know it's wrong. It's human wisdom saying that I'm going to take a sinful course of action to solve a problem. And perhaps after you've taken that action, you seem to be getting on OK. You know you're in a taking a sinful course of action, but life seems to be going fine. So you think, well, I'll carry on. That's human wisdom. It's not biblical wisdom. It's never wise to take an action, uh, a course of action that's against God's word. Never wise. Even if it seems to make life better, seems to make life easier, seems to solve problems, you seem to be getting away with it. It's never the solution to take a sinful course of action that's against God's word. It might be harder to take the right action. Or it could uh, manifest itself like this. <coughs> when you think about your salvation, this is how human wisdom thinks. It says, sin is not serious. I can make amends. I can deal with my own sin. If I do enough good in my life, I'll get right with God. Or God is not real, so my sin isn't serious. And so you don't trust Christ. You don't look to his death on the cross. You're unsaved, you're unforgiven, and it ends in destruction. That's human wisdom that doesn't trust Christ. It leans on your own understanding. It leans on yourself uh, to get right with God by excusing sin, by trying to deal with it yourself. You rest on your own understanding and you never come to trust Christ and his death on the cross. So how not to trust God? Don't lean on your own understanding. How do you trust God? Look at verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In every circumstance of your life, acknowledge God. Trust him. What is it that gives you that horrible feeling inside where you're churned up, you're worried? I'm sure you know that feeling where you're so distracted, you're so churned up on the inside, you can't concentrate on anything else. What is it when you sit down at work? Uh, what is it that weighs on your mind so much that distracts you from work that means it's difficult to work? What is it when you're sat at the meal table? Others can tell that there's something not quite right. There's something playing on your mind. What is it for you uh, that... <coughs> excuse me, that churns you up, uh, that makes you anxious. Perhaps it's your finance, uh, a legitimate concern. You, you don't know 
uh, how you're going to cope and how you're going to survive uh, financially. Perhaps it's your future life. You wish your life could be different and you think, well, will it ever happen? Will my life ever be like that? Perhaps it's your past. You know that you've messed up in the past and you think, can it ever uh, be right? Can I ever move on uh, from my past? Perhaps your children uh, or your family cause you heartache. Perhaps your health as you get older worries you and bothers you and it means you can't do the things that you used to do and it it bothers you it makes you anxious perhaps you're desperate to fit in at, at school uh, at college or at work but you know that by fitting in it would mean enjoying the same jokes using language uh, that god would have us not use and it, it bothers you because you want to fit in, but at the same time, uh, you want to do uh, what is right. Maybe it's things in church that bother you. Maybe it's unconverted friends or family and it bothers you, it churns you up, it worries you. Maybe it's a decision that you have to make. What is it that churns you up uh, and bothers you and makes you anxious? You know, all of these things... In a sense, we're right to be concerned about them. Uh, we're right to be uh, to take them seriously and to bother about them. But what do you do? Where do you go uh, when it happens? When you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling churned up, where are you going to go? What does verse 6 say? In all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge God. I don't know if you've ever asked anyone for advice uh, or perhaps you've been asked for advice and you know that whatever advice you give, you know they have no intention uh, of taking it on board, whatever. You know that they're just asking you to acknowledge that you're there and to make you feel valued and you know that actually there's, there's no way they're going to take my advice. Whatever I say, they're just asking to acknowledge that I'm there. That is not the kind of acknowledge that it's talking about here. In all your ways acknowledge him. It's not saying, God I know you're there, but I'm going to go my own way anyway. That is not the acknowledge that it's talking about here. It could be translated, in all your ways know him, know God. When you have problems and decisions and difficulties in your life, when you're bothered and you're anxious, know God. Pray to him. Get to know him as you pray to him. Read his word. Know what God's will is. Know what he wants. Know what he wants for your life as, he, as you read his word. Know God. Read the Bible. Pray. You know, whatever problem or decision you're facing, the Bible will have something to say about it. It might not give you the exact answer for your specific question, but it will give you wisdom and it will help you uh, to make that decision or to solve that problem. Read the Bible. Pray. <coughs> Excuse me. There's not always uh, a quick answer. We want quick fixes so often, but be patient, persevere, keep reading, keep praying. It will come clear eventually. When was the last time you sat down at the start of a day and you've thought about the day ahead and you've just prayed about each activity of the day? You've thought about what you've got to do. Oh, I've got to take the children to school. I'll pray about that. I've got a meeting at work, I'll pray about that. I've got to cook dinner and I don't know when I'm going to fit that in with everything else. I'll pray about that and trust God. I've got to come back home at the end of work and run the children's club and I don't have time and pray about that. Have you ever done it, gone through at the start of the day and thought, what am I doing today? And just taking each thing and praying through them one by one. Have you ever gone through the day and thought about which people will I meet today and just prayed 
about each interaction you have uh, with someone else. Commit each day to the Lord, acknowledge him, trust him, ask him for help and see him work as he helps you. We said that human wisdom leads to destruction. Human wisdom says that sin isn't serious and human wisdom never trusts in the Lord Jesus. God's wisdom ultimately uh, brings salvation. When you follow and trust God and trust his wisdom, it brings salvation. What does the Bible say? What does Paul say to Timothy? 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. Paul says, you know, from a young age, from youth, you've known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. God's wisdom brings about salvation. God's wisdom in the biggest decision, in the biggest <coughs> problem that you'll ever have in your life, God's wisdom deals with that problem. God's wisdom brings salvation. The Bible are able to, the Bible is able to make you wise to salvation. As you read the Bible and you see that salvation alone comes through faith in the Lord Jesus, as you look to him, to his death on the cross, it brings salvation as you trust in the Lord Jesus to be your saviour, to forgive you from your sins. God's wisdom, acknowledging him, knowing him, brings salvation. Knowing him through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross to deal with your sin. How not to trust God? Don't lean on your own understanding. How do you trust God? In all your ways acknowledge him. Why trust God? Why trust God? And he shall direct your paths, or he shall make your paths straight or smooth. He will make it clear to you. In all circumstances of life, trust God, and he will direct your paths. Why bother to trust God? <coughs> so often it's easier to not trust God and to lean on our own understanding. So often it's easier not to follow God's way, but to go our own way. It might bring us popularity with our work colleagues and friends. It might be easier to take a simple course of action. It might seem to solve problems. Have you ever looked at people who are wicked and they seem to be successful? They seem to prosper. Asaph uh, did. He said, you know, he's envious when he looks at the boastful. And, and they seem to prosper uh, in Psalm 73. So often it seems easier to go our own way, to follow our own wisdom rather than God's wisdom. But God directs, God makes straight, God makes smooth. This doesn't mean you get instant answers to your problems. It doesn't always mean that life is easier. So often it's more difficult to follow Christ. Jesus himself said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him take up his cross daily and follow me. It's difficult to follow Christ. But you know God's leading and you know God's peace as you follow his way and his wisdom. There is a peace in trusting God. There is a peace in trusting the Lord. And there is a joy in knowing God leading you in your life. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. It's Isaiah 26 or Philippians chapter 4. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. When you trust God, when you acknowledge him, it doesn't mean the way is always easy, it's often difficult, but there's a peace. 
knowing that you're following God and not men. There's a joy and a comfort knowing that God is leading and God is directing, even if it's difficult. And when you know that God is directing you and you know that God is good, there's a joy and a trust there. The path might not be easy, but the path of following God and trusting God is safe and secure. It's safe, always safe, to trust God and follow him. Jesus said, you know, broad, uh, wide is the gate and broad is the way. Uh, You know, easy, it's an easy path. Many follow that path to destruction. Narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life. Ultimately, when you trust Christ and know him, as your saviour, when you trust in the Lord with all your heart for your salvation, you look to Christ and his death on the cross. It's a difficult way, but it's a straight way. It's a way that God directs and it's a safe and secure way to heaven, to life, not to destruction. Trust God, keep trusting him, follow him. So how not to trust God? Well, if you lean on your own understanding, uh, that's how not to trust God. How to trust God? Acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Why trust God? He will direct your paths as a peace, a safety, a comfort in knowing uh, God's leading and God's guidance. So as we finish, let me urge you, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In everything, trust him. These are active commands, aren't they? Trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. (coughs) It's not a passive thing to trust God. You don't trust God by default. Our nature doesn't trust God. Actively trust God. What is it that churns you up? What is it that makes you anxious? What is it that worries you? What decisions have you got to make that you just don't know where to turn? Trust God. Why not this week, as you think about those decisions, as you think about those problems in your life, you think about those times when you don't trust God, why not this week set a time A definite time where you're going to pray, where you're going to read, and where you're going to trust God. Set a time where you pray. Tell God all your problems and commit it to him. Hand it over to him like you're depositing money into the bank and you just leave it there. Put all your problems, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Trust in the Lord. Set a time this week where you're going to pray, read the Bible, seek to know what God says uh, on that decision that you have to make, on that problem that you have. Read, pray, trust. It might not come quickly, the answer, but it's always better to trust in the Lord.